All right, y'all. Welcome back to the Sit Down Sports Edition. We are back. Better than ever, you know who this is. The man, the myth, the legend, Andrew. Um, and yeah, we're going we're gonna to run through it. You already know what we're doing. We're 16, 16, and uh, we'll give our thoughts real quick, and then we'll run into our, uh, run into our predictions here. Absolutely. So let's start it up. Let's, let's go. Run through it. Let's start uh, Viking Saints on Friday, Christmas Day. Uh, Alvin Kamara got a nice six Christmas <laughs> gifts. Uh, almost was selling him at Taysom Hill. Vultured one out. Yeah, he did. Um, he, got, he garbage man that one. Didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> but the Saints won this one pretty handily. Uh, this, oh. It was it, not terribly unexpected. The Vikings were kind of on a, a slow downturn for the rest of the season anyway, uh, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah. Offense played well in this game, 33 points. Yeah, they kept it up. Like that. Yeah. Good job keeping it up, uh, especially with you know Alvin Kamara running the way he was. The Vikings kept up about as well as they could have. With the situations that were presented. But yeah. the Saints were just playing lights out. Yeah, and it's one of those things, you know, when you let a guy have, you know, 22 attempts, 155 yards, and six touchdowns, and you're probably not going to be winning a game in that scenario, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Um, you know, it's if you're the Vikings, you know, it's I think that's pretty much game set match for you right there. I think they're out of playoff contention now. So yeah, I think they have to. Looking forward to next year, they got to re rethink that defense. Mike Zimmer is a head coach that prides himself on defense. Yep. He must be having a conniption thinking about how yeah. poorly his defense has played this year. Um, they need to rethink, all right, well, what really went wrong here? We have some good pieces, mm -hmm. but they didn't play very well. Uh, what do we have to do to get these guys back on track, and what can we add to make it a more successful unit? Right, and you know, and you have to address the consistency aspect, sure. too. Especially on the defensive wall, on both sides of the ball, actually. Because sure. you know, if you look at this team, this is, a, this is a story of two tails when it comes to the Vikings. You know, one week they'll play lights out in all aspects of the game. And the next game, like like this one, you know, the offense would do the best they can, but the defense can't can't stop anything. Sure, can't stop anything. So it's you know, I think that's equally as concerning as trying to fill a hole or mm -hmm. fill a particular spot because if you do, if you can't play consistently every single week, you don't even know you know what you're gonna right. get. You know, what's the product you're gonna receive every week? And I think one thing that people are gonna say is, oh well, they were versing the Saints. The Saints are a really good football team. The Vikings just aren't. But you have to think about where the squad was a year ago. Right. This defense was a top five defense. No team wanted to go against the Vikings defense. Nope. But now they're a pushover. Not many pieces have changed on that side of the exactly ball. Exactly right. So what what did change and what do we need to fix to Correct. get back on track? Yep. Saints are looking good rolling into the playoffs. They're yeah. still fighting for that first round bye. Uh, only one team gets the first round bye this year, so it's a little mm -hmm. bit different. And they're probably not going to get it. But they yeah. will. I think they probably will secure what the number two seed. With, yep. with one more win yes. next week, so yeah, absolutely. I think they'll probably be number two seed, but I don't see them getting a first round by no way or home field. So right. Um, uh, let's hop over to Bucks Lions. Uh, this was Saturday, the day after Christmas, goodness. and uh, really not much to say here other than uh, the Bucks are good, the Lions are not. And yeah. This is just the tale of two teams that are in completely different areas of mm. of like tiers of of gameplay of how how they stack up. The Bucks are in that top, the two-tier, like, upper echelon of right. the NFL, where, mm -hmm. you know, they're not up with, like, the Packers or the, the Chiefs or anything they're like that, like the Bills, but they're, right. like, down there yep. by one. The Lions are just all the way, kind of close to the bottom. Yeah, the and I think the one thing about this game that made me, you know, feel good if I'm a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan is the fact that, you know, this is exactly what I think they needed to do this game. They needed to really tune some things up. If you watched the game at all, which I know you did, yes, there was a lot more free stat motion. Mm -hmm. There was a lot more play action. Yep. They leaned on a run game more, right? This was more of the complete embodiment of the offense that I was expecting to see from week one. Mm -hmm. You know, it makes me nervous that we're seeing in week 16 against the very lackluster Detroit Lions team. Sure. But again, you know, I think they figured out something here and hopefully they can Continue to carry this into week 17 and then into the playoffs because I'll tell you what if this offense can play like they played this week They're a Super Bowl contender, but that's a big if and the good thing is is that they leaned they did What you said which is you know seemed like they actually had a game plan this week But they actually they also leaned into their star players, right? Mike Evans was a huge huge Ooh. part of that offense Gronkowski great talent they finally, I feel like this is the game they really finally got him involved. Mm -hmm. Week 16, hopefully in time for the playoffs, right. it will be set. Um, they got Antonio Brown rolling. Great, awesome. Um, 
Chris Godwin. They got him going yep. too. Like a lot of that could be because they really just don't have a running game right now. LaShawn McCoy wasn't playing yeah. well. Leonard Fournette's not an every down back anymore, and Ronald Jones is out. So they did rely heavily on that passing game, but like you said, again, they had a game plan, and right. they also were able to reach their star players like they want to. So yes. if they can keep this formula going into the playoffs, this could bear fruit for them. And one play to watch out for if you're a Buccaneers fan is, is Keyshawn Vaughn, the, their rookie running back that they played a lot this game. You know, he uh, he actually impressed me. He had some really nice jump cuts, mm -hmm. had some good agility, was willing to put his pad level down and make contact sure. with people. Yeah, I like what I saw out of him, which is good, you know, because again, if you're going to be hurt, you know, it never hurts to have a stable of running backs and to have people to step up and fill those shoes. Because mm -hmm. that's the one thing when it comes to the playoffs, you have to run the football. And it's a great thing that they now have a running back who has fresh legs. Right. He really didn't play much at all. This no. Year. Nope. So. The fact that they have a running back that really hasn't had many reps, but is still a good back going into the playoffs. That's a resource. That he's going to be looking for that contact, like you exactly said he was, against right. defenders who have been playing 17 yeah. straight weeks. And now wear them down. Right. And the playoffs as well. That's good. It's always good to have a fresh set of legs, like you said, to wear people down, right? Sure. Wear the defense down. Make things easier when yeah. that time does come. Let's hop over to Niners Cardinals. This one was a doozy. The Cardinals, CJ Beathard. And the Cardinals uh, and the uh, the Niners put on a show here, they huh? Put on a show. They they played really well for the type of team that they are. Um, where, it, like we said, it is a, it is a JV squad, right? Like <laughs> um, but they did get George Kittle back. Yep. And, and Jeff, he looked, he looked fantastic. He did look too. really he good. Looked very good. Jeff Wilson played well. Um, so that was a really a good performance by a Niners offense that the week before. Got pretty embarrassed. Yes, being honest. Um, so this week they really came for uh, J uh, Jeff Wilson. Got two hundred four yards in the game. Yep, total one hundred eighty three on the ground. That's great for you. Average eight point three a carry. That is effective. Again, this, that. this is another. This is another guy who hasn't played much all year, and, and I know the Niners aren't going to go into the playoffs. Right. But it shows when a guy has fresh legs going into Week Six. What he can do? He's gonna. Make people look stupid. Yep. And they don't have film on them either. Right. You know, when you don't have film on people, it's very hard to stop. Because everybody's talented in the NFL. And I think the one separator between a lot of teams is that there's a lot of film now. Yep. You know, when you, when you can get somebody in the game that you don't have film on, it's an unpredictable thing. You look at Taysom Hill for the Saints, you know, when he first went into the game, you know, he was lighting it up. Why? Mm -hmm. They had no film on him as a quarterback. But the second they got it, they were able to study him a little bit, what happens? Right. I think even last week when we picked the Cardinals Niners game and we were like, oh, we're going to pick the Cardinals. What did we say this game was? I think we said it was a trap game. Yep. It's a trap game. Yep. And a low score, too. You exactly. Know, and, and it was a low score. I think if you're, if you're the Cardinals, you know, you, you need to be nervous. I don't, I don't see the Cardinals making the playoffs they anymore. Do not, so they do not hold their own way to getting playoffs, mm -hmm. right? So I think we talked about it earlier. And we'll talk well, about no, it they, can, they can get in with a win. Cor uh, yes, you're correct. They have so to win. They have to win mm -hmm. to get in. Right. Um, but if they lose next week and the Bears somehow makes uh, – no matter what, if the Cardinals lose, they're out. Yep. That's it. It's done. Um, and that, that puts in the Bears and the Rams. Um, and it's unfortunate the Cardinals are in this situation. Yeah. Because if they would have won this past week against the Niners, they wouldn't have to worry about exactly it. Right. They would just be in. And that's the thing. You can't, you can't wait. You know, you, you have to be opportunistic in this league. You know, you can't wait for – you can't – just pick and choose when you're going to make things happen. And that's why I hope a lot of these teams go into week 17 playing their starters. Mm -hmm. Don't take you. I mean, take a, take a page from the Ravens last year. They didn't play their starters week 17, and they had their first run by. They had three weeks off, and they came out, and they looked awful. Yep. Keep the starters rolling. Keep that momentum. Momentum, especially in the playoffs, it's a one-game elimination. Yep. Keep that momentum and keep cruising. And, and if you're the Cardinals, um, yeah, I think your season's pretty much done. I don't think they're going to win next week. Okay. And on top of that, you know, I just don't. Uh, even if they do win, they're not making any noise in the playoffs. They, they've been they've been on a progressive downslide since week eleven. Mm -hmm. They've been getting worse ever since that hail mary against Buffalo. They've been getting worse and worse and worse every week. So Kyler is going into next week. As of this point on Tuesday, he's questionable for the game against the Rams this weekend. Um, and although the Rams don't have Jared. I think the type of quarterback play that Jared Goff provides, it's not going to impact the game as much as Kyler as Murray, much as Kyler Murray right. being hurt and right. not being able to be mobile and all that kind of stuff. So 
we'll see what happens. Again, we'll talk about it on Thursday. Mm-hmm. We'll be predicting for next week. Yep. But, um, it's a scary situation as a Cardinals fan. Mm-hmm. You guys started up really high, and now you're kind of falling back down a little bit. Hanging on for dear life now. <laughs> Uh, now let's hop over to Dolphins Raiders. Game of the week. The Saturday night <laughs> showdown. The last two minutes of that game, or even the last four minutes of that game, were unbelievable. Spectacular football. Uh, spectacularly bad football. It was just. Right, but it was. It was oh, so fun. So much fun. It was so fun. Um, Dolphins snuck away with a 26-25. Fitz magic. How about two getting pulled again? So I heard Brian Flores refer to it as. A closer in baseball, which I don't like. But I don't I, like that at all. I kind of do a little bit when it works, right? So you have your young guy, right, who's pretty much managing the game pretty much the whole way, uh, doing pretty well. If the game looks pretty far out of reach and it's looking good, you keep him in there. Right. Build the confidence. But at this point, Tua has not shown that he can be a playmaker. He does. He makes. He makes plays. He does what he's supposed to do. He does every, Does everything right. Right. He doesn't make plays. And that's a problem. You need. You need a starting quarterback to be a playmaker. It is a problem, right? But at this point, I think Brian Flores is saying, "I really want to make the playoffs. I want to win. And I really want to yep. win." So he says, "You know what? We need a quick score. Let's throw out our gunslinger. Let's get someone who's going to make big plays. And let's make like that's great coaching. I think." In my eyes, that's good coaching. I like it. I At like, this point in the season. I like the approach, you know, right. a win-now mentality. That's big in the NFL. Mm-hmm. And especially, you know, because, again, you make the playoffs, you got a chance. You know, anything anything can happen. And it you seems like both know. guys are taking it in stride. Tua's not yep. upset. Fitzpatrick, obviously, not upset. He's getting time to play. He's still got that right. fire. He's yeah. still got that going on. So, um, good on the Dolphins. Again, we'll, I, we'll, talk, we'll talk more about it in, uh, in the next episode. But the Dolphins are looking pretty well set up mm-hmm. to make a push for the playoffs. We'll see what happens. Right. In, in I think it all really depends come. on who they play, not them, which is Correct. unfortunate because they play a good team. We'll again get into on Thursday, but yeah. Uh, if you're a Raiders fan, pack it up. It's all over. You know, kiss it what goodbye. Did we say? This is exactly what we said. They're gonna collapse. Mm-hmm. They're going to just not be able. I don't. I don't think they'll win next week. I don't know who they're playing next week. I don't. Frankly, I don't care. I think they play the Jets. I'll probably pick the Jets next week over the Raiders. Ooh. I think the Raiders are going seven and nine. Wow. I mean, they were adverse to Jets, so that's over. Right. But, and they almost lost. Yeah, they should have lost. Um, you need to evaluate what you're doing mid-season that's making these collapses yep. happen. What type of attitude in the locker room is occurring where players are coming in... Almost lax of days ago. Lax of days. Right, exactly. Where they're not coming in with any sort of purpose or drive or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Where they're going into games thinking they're all that... Maybe, I, I, almost at, right after they beat the Chiefs. They've been very on and off, very wishy-washy, and now they're just wash. <laughs> yeah. They, they, they don't seem like they can pull a win together. Nope. They're very, they were very close in this game, but they blew it. Right. The defense blew it. The one part of your team that's the one thing that you're struggling consistently with is your defense, and they lost you the game. Um, I'll tell you what, that play, that last, that play that his magic made, where he's literally getting his face ripped off his body, literally a no-look. 30 yard sideline bomb, and he hit that. That was ridiculous. Yeah, I've never seen anything like if that. If that type life. of thing doesn't absolutely define that man's career, I don't know what does. It, that's so that's true. That's so <laughs> him. It's so Fitzpatrick. <laughs> Nobody else could have done that but him. And it wouldn't Nobody. happen to anybody else. No, no. Everyone's like, oh, well, if this happened to uh, Patrick Mahomes, people would be going crazy. It's Fitzpatrick. Everyone's still going. It, he's just, that's the kind of guy he is, though. Unbelievable. And, and if he missed the throw, he would have said, well, I missed the throw. I should have made the throw. Yeah, that's what I said. I should have made that throw. Yeah. Um, good on the Dolphins. We'll see what happens next yeah. week. But the Raiders got to reevaluate some things. Uh, Colts Steelers, another team who kind of oh. blew a game away. Uh, Colts had this one in the bag until they didn't. How do you feel if you're a Colts fan right now? Frustrated, nervous going into the playoffs. Because mm-hmm. when you're versing a team like the Steelers, who is a is a playoff team on a downturn, where you could have solidified your playoff spot this week, yep. you were this close against a team like the Steelers that everyone was pretty much picking you for because the Steelers are so bad. You guys seem to be on the uptick. Um, that's discouraging. Yes, it is. Especially when the loss comes on the heels of a defense in your defense 
that everyone says, oh, well, this is the cream of the crop. This is the defense that really makes plays. This is the one. Mm -hmm. and, and then it comes back to what you've been saying all year. Well, I don't really buy into the Colts' mm -hmm. defense. What, wh who are the Colts? What are their – because if they don't have a defense, if their defense isn't playing well, their offense is not going to carry that football nope. team. It's not. 24 points against the Steelers' defense. Okay, I'll give you that. Good job. Whatever. You know, my thing is this, you know, the Colts period, offense and defense, I mean, you can't allow a team to score 21 unanswered points and win a football game. You just can't let that happen. You know, and the scary thing about it is, too, is the Colts still had an opportunity to win. They had the ball in hands at two minutes left driving down the field, yep. and they blew it. Yep. You know, it's, if you're, a, if you're a Colts fan, you know, like you had said, very frustrated, you know, because this should have been a W. This should have been, and you should have, you should have stomped them. You really should have stomped them, to be honest, you were, you were up. 21-7 at halftime. What happened? You can't let, whatever happened, you can't let that happen. I think the Colts' formula right now, it seems like they want to be the 2015 Broncos. What is, what is the formula? I don't think they know what a formula I think, is. No, well, I think they want to be the team with a semi-old quarterback who has a lackluster arm. In a really it's a moderate defense. running game and it's really strong defense. But the defense, like I've like, been saying that all strong. Yes, exactly. It's not I'm saying it all season. The that defense isn't that. Secondary is weak. Yep. The front seven is good, but the Steelers don't play against the front seven anyway. Yep. Like, they don't run the ball. Yep. So how are you going to stop those three top flight receivers? Well, you can't. You don't have a possible way to. Bro, unless you've got a pass rush, which they didn't. Let this sink in for a second. The Indianapolis Colts lost the football game allowing 20 yards rushing for the game. That is, that's not good. No. That's the not secondary. good. That, it's, it's all in the secondary. The secondary is not a good unit. The, the Broncos unit, who's depleted by three guys, is better than the Colts secondary. Yeah, which is not good. That's scary. Consistently, we can we go. Right. That's a rookie like Justin Herbert, who's got a really good offense. Mm -hmm. They only let up 19 points. Right. You gave up 28 to the Steelers? Yeah, that's, that's a little nerve-wracking for sure. Especially the so. Steelers offense, who's been not able to roll at all. They couldn't roll downhill if they wanted nope. to. Nope. And I think if, you, if you're a Steelers fan, you know, don't let this, this fool you. This won't happen in the playoffs. You're not doing this in the playoffs. So if you're a Steelers Steelers fan, yeah, if you're a Steelers fan, I would be very nervous. Round one, it's looking like the Steelers, I mean, the Steelers could either have the, they could have the Colts again. They could have the Browns. They could have the Ravens, mm. or yeah. they could have the Dolphins. All teams, could be Colts good. not included, are teams that will beat the Steelers. I would will. Agree. Or at least make not, a very close or, game. Correct. So, <clears throat> Steelers be wary, Colts be warier. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's hop over to Falcons Chiefs. This one was, uh, I think the Chiefs are coasting, which is a problem. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's worrisome <laughs> coast. They, it, that's what's so scary. They could coast and still win games. That's just that's just so dumb to me. They broke like, seventeen points against a Falcons defense that is awful. Yeah, really bad. Yeah, and I, I don't know if they were trying to like try new things. Granted, they didn't have. They, that's what it felt like. They didn't have a running game really. No. Um, They're trying to figure out how to use Le'Veon Bell, I think. And I think they, you know, good on the Chiefs for winning the game. And I, it, it did feel like they were trying to experiment a little sure. bit see different things. Hey, how do defenses respond to this? How do they respond to this? You know, so I think for the Chiefs, they're thinking playoffs now. They're not even thinking about 17, sure. 17. They're just thinking, all right, let's just, let's get healthy. Let's nurse our injuries. Let's mm -hmm. figure out what we're trying to do. And then let's, let's be ready to, to make another run at this. I do think you still, going into next week, the Falcons, they're not going to talk about. They were going to put up 14 points against the Chiefs. They weren't going to do much more than that. Yeah. I'm surprised the defense played as well as they did. Congratulations, you played a team that wasn't even thinking about it. That's very true. Yep. Um, <laughs> the Chiefs going into Week 17, I think you play your starters first half. See sit how it goes. Sit yeah. second. Evaluate, exactly. Right. Um, right. Because Patrick Mahomes is at a point where, in the playoffs, he's been there, done that. Yep. He knows what to expect. He knows how to rally the guys. Um, the only thing I would say is Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. I don't know if he's going to play in the playoffs. I would, it. I would, it. Exactly. I would get Le'Veon mm -hmm. reps in that week 17 because he needs them. Yes. You need to figure out how you're going to make that running game work. I think that's the big thing they need to work on in this week 17. It needs to be – really, it needs to be a scrimmage for their running game. They should run run the ball experiment. 30 times. Yes, experiment. See Correct. what works. Get your run blocking guys out there. Make something work in the second half. 
get some young guys some reps, mm-hmm. get some guys on film. It's like a preseason game, honestly. Yeah, more or less, yeah. Uh, get, some, get some people loose, and they're like, all right, we're good. We don't, we, we don't need to get hit around. And second, Patrick Mahomes gets sacked once. And then they, so, got, a, yeah, <laughs> and then they got a first run by, too. So right, they, exactly. they'll be able to, you know, milk their wounds and, you know, get, get back to health. Because you know? that's the thing. Like I had said from the start of the season, the only thing that's going to stop the Chiefs is injuries and, and self-injury in terms of, them not playing their brand of football. Exactly. As long as they play their brand of football, mm-hmm. nobody's beating them. Nope. I don't care if it's the Packers. I don't care if it's the Buccaneers. I don't care if it's the Seahawks. I don't care if it's the Saints. Nobody's beating them. Mm-hmm. Not if they play their brand of football. You already put them in the Super Bowl. I did. And I think, <laughs> I, I think they're going to win it. Like I said, if they stay healthy, sure. they will win the Super Bowl. Uh, top over to Bears, Jaguars. Uh, Is Mitchell Trubisky the answer? At this point, yeah. At this point, yeah. Because Nick Foles is the problem. Especially if they make it into the playoffs. If they if they go in and shock the Packers this week and make the playoffs, Oof. watch out for the Bears. Which I don't think will happen. No, I don't, <laughs> think, I don't think so either. Um, if the Bears make the playoffs, I'm doing next week's episode of Clown Makeup. Okay. I said I would. <laughs> yeah, you did, actually. He did say that. I did, I said he did the say that, yo. Maybe I'll just turn to the camera and I'll have you put it yeah. in. Yeah. I don't know if I could wear that. Um, no, the Bears look really good right now. Um, might be a little too, little too late. They do yeah. need a lot of things to happen for them to get to the playoffs next week. If they win next week, good job. You're in. But if you lose, you got a problem. It takes a Cardinals loss. Right. It takes yeah. a Cardinals loss. If the Cardinals yeah. lose, then great. You're in. Congratulations. But if the Bears win and the Cardinals win, They're I'm out. sorry, if the, if the, if if the Bears- Cardinals win and the Bears lose, I mean, even if the Bears win, the Cardinals win, they're still out. They, they, they beat them in a tiebreaker, no? I don't think so. I think the, the Bears, if the Bears win, they're in. Okay. And then that would put the Rams out if the Cardinals win. Gotcha. But if the Cardinals win and the Bears lose, Cardinals and Rams are in. Right. Okay. Gotcha. So, um, should be interesting to see. Jaguars, congratulations on getting Trevor Lawrence. Oh, yeah. Don't ruin his career. You guys please. So, here's my take on that. I think... There is no better place for them to be than Jacksonville. Create a brand there. Create a Big culture. Brand, right. Nice young running back. That he's going to get a new head coach. Most likely. I, I don't know, actually. Don't, don't hold your breath. Don't hold your breath. Don't hold your breath. Why would they let him make all those moves to fire him? They're going to fire him. I, I don't know about that. We'll see. I, would, I won't listen. I won't be shocked either way. All right. But, just based off of what the Jaguars have let him do up to this point, I don't know. I mean, they let Bill O'Brien trade away DeAndre Hopkins when they fired him. Well, Bill O'Brien's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just be real. Bill O'Brien is just dumb. <laughs> Plain and simple. Um, he'll most likely have a new head coach. He has good young wide receivers. Yeah. They need to build that defense. Yes. Um, but with Trevor Lawrence and a line, get him an offensive yeah, line. Yes, an offensive line. Please. 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 Trevor is a mobile guy, but he's not a running guy. Nope. So he will get you out of some serious situations. He might end up like Patrick Mahomes where he's going to make some plays. But get him an O-line and get him a defense. Make him and a pocket passer. He will light it up. He will light it up, especially with a good running. I'm, like, excited thinking about it. Yeah. I think they should change their uniforms just for this kid. Like, they got they got make some. I mean, they changed their uniforms like three times the past two seasons. Though. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, I'm excited to see what Trevor Lawrence does in Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. I think he'll be good. Also excited to see what Gardner Minshew does in another place somewhere down the line. You don't think he'll be a backup? Uh, no, I think he'll be a starter somewhere. Oh, I don't know. I don't think. I think whoever he signs with, they'll go in as a backup, and you know, compete. he's gonna end up taking that job wherever he goes. Whether it be he could be a backup in Cincy, Cincinnati could use a good backup, or he could go into Cincinnati as the starter until Joe Burrow gets back. I think that'd be a good place for him. Um. Uh, the Jets, he can be the backup to Sam Darnold. He has injury they issues. They Justin Fields. They don't need him. I don't know if they'll take Justin Fields. Oh. They might take the kid from Florida. Mm. He's good. He, oh, he's up um, for the Heisman. Yeah, yeah. from UF, right? He, he had Joe Burrow type numbers this past year. He did, but it's also, you look at the Florida, you look at Florida's schedule. Mm. That's kind of like luster. That's right. Um, he could go to... The Giants as a backup for Daniel Jones. They could use a good backup. I mean, Colt McCoy did okay, but I think having a guy like... I think any team would be lucky to have Gardner Minshew. Broncos as a backup. It looks like they're going to keep Drew Locke. Get Gardner Minshew in there as a backup. I can't wait to get to that. Oh, my God. 
tear his ass up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but my point is, Gardner Minshew, I think this is not the end of his career. I think he's going to have a good place somewhere else. Um, and I think he's going to surprise some people as a backup. I think he'll have opportunities, but I think those opportunities are going to be far and few in between, so he needs to capitalize. Mm-hmm. When he gets his opportunities, sure. he has to make the most of them. Because with a guy like him who doesn't really do any one thing particularly like really Crazy well, well right, you have to be consistent and you have to be opportunistic. Washington football team? Maybe as a backup. Adventure? Sure. Oh, you think as a backup? Backup, yeah. I don't see him as a starter. I really don't. Mm-hmm. I've never been on that train. Right. But we'll see. Uh, we'll talk to Bengals, Texans. Um, can we get Deshaun Watson some help, please? Well, listen, I've been saying this since... He's putting up crazy good numbers. I've been saying He's this since He's like first and second in the league in like everything. Yeah, and also sacks and pressures and hits on the quarterback. It's so unfortunate how he's just almost like an afterthought to that organization. Deshaun, I'm telling you, man. Come over to New England. We'll take care of you over there. I'm dead serious. Gardner Minshew in New England? Nope. <laughs> Don't, Don't do want it. Him. Um, Don't want him. No, I mean, the Texans look... They, their offense looks good in every game, except their offensive line. That, that offensive line is just bad. And the defense is even worse. Um, the team is just a dumpster fire. It's, it's dumpster just bad. fire. I don't know what they're going to do. I, I, part of me thinks that coming up next season, they're going to like somehow right the ship, and they're going to be a good football team again next year. But it's hard to say because there's you're losing to teams like the Bengals. You currently have a better draft position than the Bengals. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, you don't get to use that draft pick either. Because you're That's going to the Dolphins. Yep. Right? yep. So how yeah. do you how do you even get better? How do you even do what you're supposed to? Like it's just what are they? Laramie Tunsil. Oh my god. <laughs> and guess what he's not doing? Protecting Deshaun Watson. No, he's not. Um, oh dear lord. <laughs> there's really not. I mean, both of these teams are. Hey, good on the Bengals for showing a little bit of heart. Yeah, that's right. I'll be honest with that's you. True. That's uh picked them this week. Thank you very much, Bengals. We'll get into that a little bit later, but wow. It, it's just a, it's abysmal when the Texans are able to not pull off. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. They go toe-to-toe with teams like the Colts, but then they also get smacked by teams like the Bengals. Yeah, I think that J.J. Watt interview soundbite that he had is the all. epitome of the season. That's it. That's all we need to say right there. Yep. There. Pack it in next season. We'll come back. Uh, let's hop over to Ravens, Giants. So the Ravens won this one, 27-13. Yep. They have established that they're not going to really... Yeah. We'll what? say who we're picking and not picking. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> we'll do it next we'll time. We'll do it next time. <laughs> um, the Ravens have established that they are not going to beat teams by a lot. Nope. But that's okay. Lamar Jackson's playing well now. He, he's, came, he's coming to his stride. He's established who he is as a running back, as a, ooh, excuse me, as a quarterback. Slip of the tongue there. J.K. Dobbins, great job at running back right now. Mm-hmm. Feed him, keep him going. Defense is playing well. I mean, granted, it was against the Giants, but still, defense is playing well. Can they keep this momentum going into the playoffs? Your take. They need to make the playoffs first. That's true. They need to make it first, you know, and again, we'll go into the scenarios on Thursday, but... You know, I think the scenarios that they run into work in their favor. If they win this game next week against the... Bengals. Bengals, which I think they should. 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 Operating more. Yeah, <laughs> should. You know, that's another trap game. Um, you know, I would imagine they pretty much are going to get in no matter what. Yes. Um, so they just need to win next week, which I think they will do. Um, and I think if they learn anything like they did last year, don't sit your starters. Play throughout the year. Keep the momentum, keep the keep the right. move going, right? And you're like you had said, Lamar Jackson is starting to finally figure out, hey, I can throw it, you know, twenty six times, complete seventeen, you know, passing attempts, have hundred and eighty three yards and two touchdowns, and we can still win. Yep. I don't have to be I don't have to put up Madden like numbers like I did last year. It's sure. to win. I can I can be quote unquote average and we can still win. Right. You know, don't try to do too much, just do what you win need the game. to do. Yes, keep keep your you know keep your offense out of harm's way, and what I like a lot about Lamar is he showed a lot of willingness this past week to to run the football to get out of trouble. Sure, that's where he's effective. Run the football to get yourself out of trouble. You know, if you look at the, the, the rushing egg to get out of trouble, not design runs, right? The big difference because mm-hmm. you look, you know, he had 13 rush attempts for 80 yards. That's 6.2 on average. That's good. And if they're for if, they're, if that's for 80 yards, that's 
because they're not designed runs. They're runs where he saw an opening, he took it. So mm-hmm. I think this scenario for the Ravens is actually being 10 and, 10 and 6, 11 and 5 going into the playoffs is better than being 13 and 3 in my eyes and being complacent, for them. Right, I'd agree. Because they're, they're in a fighting mode. They're in a grinding right. mode. They're in this mental headspace of we need to we fight need to for it. every single yeah. win we're going to get. We saw the Bengals are on a two game winning streak and they beat some good teams. Yeah. Beat some good quarterbacks. We can't sleep on the they Bengals. Bring it now. I think they're going to go in and they're going to beat the Bengals and they're going to beat the Bengals bad. They're not going to let off on the gas. And I think they need to do that and keep going into the playoffs yes. with that agree. mentality because yep. Lamar Jackson cannot get a break. Nope. Keep him going. Nope. Keep him moving. You have to. Because he needs that. He needs that mentality of we need to fight for every win yep. we need. Completely agree. Um, Giants, if they win, tough year. Tough year. It's it is. It I is. don't feel like they have really are gonna. I don't feel like they really have a chance anymore. If you know, I just feel like that offense is just. So they're going against a rolling Cowboys team next week, and if they can somehow pull out a win there, they still need the Washington Football Team to lose against the Eagles, which could happen. Could. But will they beat the Cowboys? We'll let you know. Yeah. But I think. The Giants are in an unfortunate spot because if they had Saquon Barkley this whole time, they might be in a different position. They would probably be winning this division. They probably would have already won it. Possibly. Um, it's really it's unfortunate. Tough. To but I'll tell you what: if you're a Giants fan, be excited for the future because I think you have some some young guys yes. there, and you have a and you have a culture, right? You yes. have a culture that's a winning culture. Mm-hmm. Keep that, and you got a dang chance. Mm-hmm. You got a chance. So I, if you're a Giants fan, be excited actually. Yeah. So I think this is the first time you can actually finish the season and think, hey, next season might actually be good for us. Yep. They've done nothing but get better. Exactly right. So we'll see what happens. Yep. Uh, let's go to. My goodness. Browns, Jets. Um, I'm not even really talk on this one. This this was just ridiculous. The Browns yeah. look awful. However, I I don't I don't want to give them a pass. I don't want to put it that way, but. They were missing five wide receivers. Five wide receivers. So they were Which starting. It's a big deal. They're basically starting practice squad guys. Yes. Um, which is unfortunate. However, to run the ball as poorly as they did, it's unacceptable. It's, it's unacceptable, yep. especially against a team like the Jets, who don't pride themselves on much of anything. Um, so you ran the ball eighteen times for forty-five yards. Nick Chubb, 2.5 yards to carry. Kareem Hunt, 2.8. What happened? Because you didn't run the ball that much to say, like, well, the Jets knew we were going to run the ball, so they loaded the box and, and, you know, they stopped us. Run blocking was awful. You had nothing but tight ends, so you should keep... I like, Pass blocking was bad, too. Put out a goal line formation and run the ball. You have, t- you have the best running back tandem in football. I would agree. The best duo of running backs in, in the league. And the second best running game in the league, next to the Titans. Mm-hmm. So, why are you, A, only running the ball 11 times? I'll tell you why. With Nick Chubb and four times with Kareem Hunt. And B, why didn't the times you ran the ball work? Evaluate it, and then maybe come in and be the Steelers team next week that's running with Mason Rudolph then. Right. Because the Steelers are basically saying, go ahead, Browns, make the playoffs. Go ahead. If you're lucky enough to even get in, you got to figure that out. Yeah. Because that's a problem. I'll tell you what. I think this is exactly what happened. Cleveland was looking up at the scoreboard at halftime going into that third quarter and saying, yo, we're losing to the Jets by a margin here, by almost 11 points. Um, we need to try to catch up and make up this deficit. So they started to get throw happy. Not run happy, right? You see this all the time. Two throw happy. Yes, you see this all the time. When you when you when you don't want to commit to the run, the pass becomes ineffective. You look early in the game, the pass was effective because the rushing attack was consistent. The second that run attack stopped, they started to send the dogs on Baker Mayfield, and he was getting lit up back there. And you look at the last play of the game. What was it? It's a fumble. Off of pressure. So, it's really because there's. You lost by a touchdown. You didn't lose by three. It's not even close. It was that wasn't close. You shouldn't 
You didn't lose by three touchdowns. How does Baker Why Mayfield, are you throwing the ball 53 times? How does Baker Mayfield fumble on a quarterback sneak? So I'm, I've never seen that either. You lose the game on a quarterback sneak fumble. What in the world is that? If you're a Browns fan, <laughs> y'all better be sweating. So if <laughs> hypothetically, if the Browns lost by two touchdowns and rushed for 100 yards and they still lost. I'd say, you know what, fine, it's probably because you didn't have receivers, sure. you couldn't catch up the deficit, defense didn't play very well, but they're usually a good unit, I'll give them a pass, bad game, whatever. You ran the ball for 45 yards, six of which are from Baker Mayfield, so you ran the ball for 39 yards against the Jets mm. on 15 carries, and you threw the ball 53 times. How about you take maybe a quarter of those pass plays, turn them into run plays, and beat the Jets into submission. You gave them too much. Yeah, way too much. You can't much. play like that. Nope. You are not, at this point, you're not an anything caliber team. Wow, they lost it. Rams and the Browns. Oh. If they somehow make the Super Bowl, the Jets should say they're the Super Bowl champions. Yeah, like, like. Beat them both back to back. Like UCF did, and they're like, oh, we beat this team, and this team beat that team, therefore, we're the national champions. I would, I would, I would send the Jets Super Bowl rings. <laughs> Brothers. All right. Oh, goodness gracious. Let's hop over to Panthers football team. Oh, God. Oh, you're right? Yeah. For some reason, it's a little too much on me. I like it. Actually, let's go to the, let's go to Broncos Chargers. Let's talk about that really quick. Okay. Right. Yep. All right. Let's go Broncos Chargers. Uh, this was a low scoring affair. Um, as bad as both defenses are, the offenses were worse. Um, Chargers won 19-16. The Broncos got real close there at the end. Hey, congratulations to, uh, to Justin Herbert for setting the uh, NFL rookie uh, record for uh, touchdown passes in the season. And passing yards. Good on him. And passing yards. Good on him for doing that. Yeah. Uh, um, Justin Herbert, um, obviously rookie of the year. Um, very excited to see his young talent prosper into something bigger and greater and like taking that Chargers team into um, something that's going to yeah. be really, really good somewhere down he, the road. He's going to be a force later on. Because that offense, people are... When you see a young quarterback, free agents are going to want to come to you because they're like, oh, hold on, this guy's good, and guy. he's going to be good for a while, so yeah. I want to play with him. Um, hopefully they can get that defense figured out. Derwin James, hopefully he can come back healthy. They need to shore up that secondary. Was it Melvin Ingram? Melvin Ingram. For the whole year. Yeah. yeah. Joey Bosa was in and hurt. out of the lineup. In and out, right. Um, Chargers can be a good football team. But will they continue to get better? That's, That's what they need to do. Yep. I, I'll give them a, this is a mullet, not a mullet year, but like this is a growing learning year. Absolutely. You got Justin Herbert. You're, you're just not a rookie quarterback. You know, it, you know what it's going to be. Exactly. And they weren't expecting to start Justin Herbert no. either. They started Tyron Taylor at the start of the year. So I think Justin Herbert's going to do really well. He's going to make the Chargers a really good playoff team. He's going to start pushing Patrick Mahomes into having to actually play against AFC uh, West teams we'll see. at some point. We'll see. I think they're going to try and get the same formula that Patrick Mahomes has, which is a speedy wide receiver, a really big target, which will be their Keenan Allen, I assume, and then a good running game, and then getting that defense to a serviceable spot. I think that's what the Chargers are going to try to do. Yeah. I think the Chargers are going to get to a point, at maybe if not next year, the year after, where they're going to be splitting games with the Chiefs pretty regularly. Possibly. Because the Chiefs are at a point where they're pretty much sweeping the division other than one game, like, total, not mm -hmm. even one team. They lost to the Raiders once. That was it. Um, I'm excited to see how the Chargers do. Being a Broncos fan, how do you how do you feel about Drew Locke? Where are you at with him? If, I, if I'm a Broncos fan, I want him gone. I really do, honestly. I really do. Like, uh, if I'm a Broncos fan, I've seen enough. I've seen a large enough sample size. I've seen the same poor decisions. I've seen the same stupid dance moves in the end zone when he does something that an elementary school kid could do. And then I see him make more stupid mistakes after that. I've seen the same thing for two years now. What is it? Two or three years? A year and a half. So two this seasons. This is his first full season. Two seasons. This is his first full season. Two seasons. This is his first full 
And he's, bro, I just, I don't know. He just, I don't know. I just don't see him, I don't see him being the solution. I really don't. So there's two groups of Broncos fans. Uh, there's one group that defends Drew Locke into oblivion. Says he's a good young quarterback. He's getting better every year. If you look at his first whatever career starts as, as Josh Allen, he has better numbers, if not very similar. Um, anybody can go cherry pick stats. <laughs> it's what? It's, it's, I'm just, I'm just, I, I know, I'm just saying it out loud. So <laughs> there's that group of Broncos fans, and there's the group of Broncos fans who are like, can we pick some? This is such a quarterback heavy draft. Can we just get one, please? Because I think the fifth best quarterback in the draft would go number one any other year. I would agree. So, what? What draft pick did the Broncos have? Uh, at this point, I think we're top ten. Okay. I think we're looking at top ten. I can check the standings to see where we're at. Um, we are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're nine. Okay. We're, we're this That's a lottery pick. We'll take that. Right. Um, other uh, right. Other Broncos fans are saying we, we Drew is not the answer. Like you're saying, he's not it. He's not the one. I'm somewhere in the middle. If if they draft somebody early, not mad. I think it's great. Give Drew Lock competition. Sure. And then also give that kid competition because he got Drew Lock. Where the whole fan base is behind him. So if that kid can get some adversity. Uh, um, power through adversity, and great, awesome, good job. Um, if they don't take a guy early, I think this is the last gasp for Drew Locke. Agreed. Portland Sutton was out all year, which, with the amount of weapons that we do have, should not be an excuse, but the only reason I think it is is because during his stint last year, his five games that he played, like four and one, a lot of his targets in the red zone where, and deep passes and things that he's comfortable with mm-hmm. in Portland Sutton. Yep. And Noah Fan. Noah Fan was on and off this year in terms of injuries and all that kind of stuff. So once Portland Sutton gets back, now you got Jerry Judy on both sides. That gives the defense, uh, the opposing defense, real catch 22 when you cover. Sure. And you got a speedster like KJ Hamler who's really been showing up towards the end of this, this year. Noah Fan should be healthy. We always say that though. Um, and you got some good young pieces on that offensive line. Mm-hmm. You still got Philip Lindsay and Melvin Gordon. If they decide to roll with Drew Locke next year, I wouldn't blame him. I'm not mad about it. However, if he doesn't perform halfway through the season, hopefully you picked a young quarterback, put him in the mix. Yep. Because Drew Locke needs to be pushed. Because right now, this is his job. I can't handle it being his job. He needs to have some sort of pressure on his back to see if he either folds or if he prospers. If he folds, he's not the guy. If he prospers, great. But if he folds, you're watching some of the highlights. Right. If, yeah. he, if he folds, great. You got a young guy who can go in, hopefully he plays well, and plays efficiently. My notes to draw John Elway. Stop picking gunslingers. Yeah, seriously. Stop picking guys with strong arms. It hasn't worked. Joe Flacco isn't work, didn't work. Case Keenum didn't work. Paxton Lynch didn't work. How about we get a pocket passer? Brock Osweiler didn't work. When we got a pocket passer, he played well. He's just not a, he just wasn't a starter. It's Trevor Simeon. He's good, good backup. He's just not a starting quarterback. Is this little Bronco? No, he's um he bounced around from the Jets to the Titans. Okay. I think he's backing up J- uh, Brian Hannon right now. Gotcha. Good quarterback, not a starter. And he played well for us. No problems. Just not a starting quarterback. Fine. Whatever. No big deal. Um, Pick a guy like Tua. Because that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to build a strong defense with an offense with weapons where a quarterback can make things happen. Tua, if we had Tua on the Broncos, my God, we'd be like 15 and up. Because we had a quarterback who didn't make stupid mistakes trying to toss it down the field on the same on the same deep post route every time. Oh, God. <laughs> and he's hitting his playmakers. Oh. So, as a Broncos fan, stop stop ramming your head against the wall and expecting something to change. Mm. Your head's still going to hurt if you keep ha- ramming your head against the wall. 
Yeah. Maybe try maybe would. try wearing a helmet. Or maybe try stop banging your head against the wall. Do something different. And for do change. something else. Yeah. Thank you. So pick a quarterback who actually has accuracy and doesn't have accuracy issues. It doesn't throw you're not trying to find the next Brett Favre. Right. Try and find the next Peyton Manning. Yeah. Yeah. Moving on. Let's go to the Panthers football team. And what if you guys traded up for the first pick? I think you have to trade the entire roster to get up to that first pick. You send your first rounder and in the next year's first rounder. If you have faith in I don't think Jacksonville would do it. Two first rounders? No, they wouldn't do it. Trevor's tre- I think you have to trade your entire draft and the entire next draft. Yeah, just make it. <laughs> it's Trevor Tre- so and we'll talk about Trevor Lawrence later, but like Trevor Lawrence is the best quarterback prospect. Since Andrew Luck. Mm-hmm. And before Andrew Luck, since Peyton Manning. All right. The best prospect. Not the best quarterback. We all know Tom Brady is the best quarterback. That's not that's unquestionable. But the best prospect coming out of college, guy who's got the biggest upside. Trevor Lawrence is that next big guy. Yeah. Who's a pretty much guaranteed, like, you're gonna be really close to going to the playoffs the next season if you draft. Maybe. We'll see. So he definitely is has that hype. Exactly. I, and I like what I see, so we'll see. So, Let's would I love to see Trevor in a Broncos uniform? Absolutely. Who wouldn't? I would like to see him in a Patriots uniform. <laughs> but will we? No. no. Uh, Panthers football team. Uh, football team would have made the playoffs if they would have won this game. Well, you and don't have your starting quarterback in Dwayne Haskins. Dwayne, I'm going to close my eyes and just throw it in the air and hope and pray Haskins is the back as <laughs> your quarterback. You don't have too much of a chance. He's so bad. If they released him. Yeah. And let that sink in. He was the 15th overall pick in the draft two years ago and he got released. That's yeah. awful, bro. Yeah. That's terrible. So when you got a quarterback like that, that's it. And good on the Carolina Panthers for being opportunistic. I mean, it didn't mean yeah. anything. No. It just has nothing to do Probably with the indications of this. Point, but yeah. But good on them for winning. You know, it's uh, that Washington defense, keep it up. Keep doing what you're doing. Don't get discouraged. Yep. Alex Smith is coming back. That offense will carry its weight yep. soon enough. Uh, Don't get discouraged. Alex, Keep playing with your heads on yep. fire. You'll be all right. Alex Smith should be back next week. Yep. Um, if he's not, I would be worried. If he is, I'm not as worried. Uh, you got the Eagles next week, and they're they're a young team that's, that wants to ruin your season. Jalen Hurts wants to ruin your season. He's looking at your team and he's saying, you are not going to make the playoffs, and I don't care if I have no chance of doing anything. I'm going to make sure that you can. That's what this team's mentality is mm-hmm. right now. And that's a very dangerous team to go against. Yes, it is. So You look at, you look at the, the 2000 and 2000 Ravens when they had uh, Shannon Sharp, Ray Lewis, all those people. You know, They always talked about how, hey, our offense might be pretty crappy. We might not be able to score, but you'll be damned if you will. Yep. You won't score either, so yep. we're going to see. Um, and they're going against, next week, an Eagles team, which we're going to talk about in just a second. They're going against an Eagles team that put up 17 points against the Cowboys defense. So Jalen Hurts has been very on and off. Will he show up against Washington? Who knows? But the fate is in Washington's hands. If they win, they're in. Mm-hmm. If they lose, it's either the Cowboys or the Giants, whoever wins that game earlier in the day. Yep. So... Uh, let's, speaking of the Eagles and Cowboys, let's hop over to them. Uh, Cowboys, again, won 37-17. Three weeks in a row, Cowboys. Thank you so much. <laughs> Three, you make me look like I know what the hell I'm talking about. Well, there's a big reason you got that cup sitting right there. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Um, <laughs> Cowboys, offense is looking really good right now. Yeah. It's weird. They're grooving right now. Yeah. It's scary looking. Are the Cowboys going to you know? Win the NFC East. They need some help, but I think they beat. The, I think they'll beat the Giants next week. I do too. So, if the, all things considered, I don't know. Oof. It depends. But yeah, if you're Philly, I think uh, Carson Wentz's time in Philly is over. I think, I think the decision has been made for you by the play of Jalen Hurts. Is Jalen Hurts the answer? Absolutely not. But he's a better solution than Carson Wentz right now. Yep. So, I think uh, you saw the last of Carson He's part Wentz. of the equation, I think. Yeah, which is startling. Um, and I think if you're a Dallas Cowboys fan, you got a little bit of hope. I know I said the ship has sunk and there's no coming back, but somehow, some way, there was a little dinghy that you guys shot off the ship before it was sinking, and now you're sitting in there. So, we'll yeah, see. That dinghy might have been Ezekiel Elliott. You should have thrown him overboard while yeah. he was weighing down your ship. 
<laughs> you got that right. <laughs> oh man. Um, I mean, hey, good on the Cowboys. I don't know if it'll amount to anything if they make the playoffs, but um, Andy Dalton is a playoff quarterback. Just so you guys know. The Red Rocket. He's not, he will not be the reason you guys miss the playoffs. 22 for 30, 377, three touchdowns and an INT, which really wasn't his fault. He's a good quarterback. Yeah. That's nuts. If you had Dak Prescott, you wouldn't be seeing much different. I don't think so. I don't think. Nope. I think you'd still be 6 and 9, and you'd still be in the playoff run. And I'd rather have Andy Dalton going into the playoffs than Dak right now, because Andy Dalton has playoff experience. Mmm. That's a good point to make. I've been hot taking Dak Prescott all week. He's probably, I swear, if Dak Prescott watches this, he's going to find me. <laughs> uh, let's hop over to Rams, Seahawks. Um, unfortunate day for the Rams. They lost Jared Goff at some point during the game. Yeah. Um, he had just had thumb surgery. He most likely will not play next week, which against the Cardinals. Did he play the full game? I'm not 100 percent sure. I think he did. Did he? Because he had 43 attempts. I don't think you're throwing for 40. You're throwing 43 times if you don't play a full game. I'm not sure. I, so I, I, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I didn't catch the whole game. I didn't either. But I'm, I'm pretty sure that he played the full game. Um, if you're the Rams, you should be very concerned. Especially without Jared Goff. And just especially with how bad your team has been. These past four weeks, it's been so inconsistent. The, the only big win you guys have is against the Patriots, and, the offense, and that's nothing. And the offense has been the issue, yeah. right? They haven't put up as, nearly as much points as they should. The Rams' defense played as well as I thought they would, but the offense is – I've never caught back up to where we thought they would. Nope. They have good weapons on offense. They have Robert Woods. They have Cooper Cup. They have had Jared Goff. Um, they need a better running game, but that offensive line is good. Like – I'm not really sure what is wrong in this scenario. I mean, granted, the Seahawks' defense is a good defense. They're good. They're not great. No. Um, I would say they're, there's they're no reason decent. Put up, no I reason, would even say they're good. They're there's, decent. There's no reason to put up nine points. No. No, I mean, that's my thing. You know, I, I don't think it says – I don't think this is about Seattle. This is about the Rams and the lack of yes. ability to score points. And, yes. you know, if you're looking to make the playoffs, you're going to have to score points and win games. Mm -hmm. And nine points isn't going to win you many games, no. if any, ever. No. So you got to figure that out. And now that Jared Goff's out, it's going to make it a lot more challenging for you. They most likely won't win next week against the Cardinals, especially if the Cardinals have Kyler. Um, and then they need some help. They need the Bears to lose. Yep. So we'll see. Very interesting. Well, uh, let's hop over to Titans Packers. Mm -hmm. This did not go how I thought it would. I for so when I saw that it was going to be stop get that look. Yay! <laughs> when I saw that it would be snowing as much as it did, you thought this would help the Titans. I thought it would. Mm -hmm. I was like, "Oh man, this is gonna be a ground and pound game. The Titans are gonna take it. They're gonna be going. They're gonna run all over them." I love it when I look like I know what I'm talking about. Aaron Rodgers <laughs> played better in the snow than he does when it's not. What is that about? Well, I'll tell you what. This is kind of. This is. Kind of exactly how I sort of thought it would go, to be honest with you, it's in terms of. Of the Titans defense. Yeah, and this is kind of what I thought it would be. I, I thought it would come down to the Titans really trying to run the football, and then the Packers just. You, you get more yards throwing than you do running 98% of the time. And that's what you saw. I, you know, it was one of those things Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon for the Packers both had a huge day. They went, one had 94, you know, A.J. Dillon had 124 yards, and then. Aaron Jones, I think, had 94? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 94. You know, they, A.J. Dillon averaged 5.9 a carry, and Aaron Jones averaged 9.4 a carry. Mm -hmm. And then Aaron Rodgers ran three times for 19 yards and averaged 6.3 a carry. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're a Titans fan, you know, that's not good. That is not good. When it comes to the playoffs, the Titans better hope they, uh, they play somewhere warm because Ryan Tannehill can't play in the cold. No, he can't. Cannot play in the cold. He, he played, does he, not like it very much. He played much. at Texas A&M. He played in Miami. He does not like the cold. Nope. He plays in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. It's not cold in Tennessee. It's, it's not that cold. No. It's not like <laughs> not that. Not that cold. Mm -mm. Um, you better hope you play somewhere warm. Yeah. Because I think that's going to be a big deal for this Titans team because they did not look like they usually do. No. They the looked. defense played about as well as I thought they yeah, but yeah, that defense. That running game needs to be better, and the passing game needs to be way better. You can't go under fifteen for, uh, under fifty percent. You want to something crazy? It's not probably crazy. Aaron Rodgers is gonna win the MVP. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's over. Oh, absolutely. That game if he doesn't crazy. win MVP, it's rigged. 
Agreed. Yeah, he should win MVP this year. Which would be what, his first one? Second. That's a shit. This, it's rigged already. <laughs> Let's be real. Yeah, uh, if you're a Packers fan, win this week, win week 17, and get that first round by and get a home field. You're probably looking at a Chiefs Packers Super Bowl. Yeah, I'll see. If the Packers get home field, they're Super Bowl bound. I really I, do I don't think, think that. the Saints can be nope. in Green Bay. Not in, in January? Nope. That would be big for Green Bay. Huge. Especially with that weather. Huge. It's going to be cold all year. Ice. No one's going to come into that house and win. Uh-huh. Definitely not Tampa. Definitely not Tampa. Definitely not Brady's Tampa. Brady's good in the snow, though. Brady loves him some snow, baby. Not everyone else, though. No. <laughs> Brady be eating snow cones all day. <laughs> uh, let's hop, speaking of Brady, uh, let's hop Bill's Patriots, the team that misses Brady so much. Oof. Well, I'll uh, tell you what, this went exactly how we expected it yes. to be an absolute stomping. I mean, it, there's really not much to talk about here. This is, the Bill, so he, he, there's one thing I do want to talk about. The Bills, right now, are the scariest team in football. I would be nervous if the Bills go against the Chiefs, as a Chiefs fan. Because the Chiefs, as of what we've seen in the past four weeks, mm -hmm. are not playing up to snuff. They're no. winning, mm -hmm. but they're not playing well. But the Bills, they're beating bad teams. Yeah. And they're beating them badly. If the Chiefs offense keeps playing like they're playing, I, I completely agree. Yes. But if Will the they Chiefs, just be able to turn it off? If the Chiefs the offense can just play like they normally play, I don't have any worry where I, I don't have any scares about the Bills offense, but the defense that gets me worried sure. because the Chiefs are gonna hang a lot of points and the Bills, I think, out of pressure and out of pressure to keep up with the Chiefs, they're gonna make a mistake or two, which is gonna get them into trouble. I think they're way more similar than people want to give credit. If if the Bills can keep the game low scoring, that's where I mean, they granted, we're already putting them in the championship game together. Sure. The Bills are gonna be the two seed. Yeah, which would because most likely be the exactly Steel, the Steelers are essentially throwing week seventeen. Right. So the Bills are gonna get the two seed because they already beat the Steelers earlier in the year. Which would put Yeah, which would put them in the one and two. And mm -hmm. the Bills don't want to buy a week. You don't want to buy a week into the Bills. You're the you're rolling, you want that game. Keep moving. You wanna keep moving, yep. right? I'm very excited to see who they play. Yeah. And to see how bad they beat them because the Bills yeah. will win. Yeah, I agree. They're gonna go deep this year, the Bills. So interesting. Yeah, but already y'all. That was it. Wow, I heard that, was first. One. that was a long one. That was a <laughs> That was a chonker right <laughs> there. Chonker. <laughs> but already y'all, check back in on Thursday to see our Week 17 predictions as well as who won our Week 16 picks. Um, it's gonna be. Uh, Got some groundbreaking news, but I will we'll save that for, for Thursday. <laughs> but already, y'all, until next time, we'll see you later.